Um, it is Q&A day. It is Friday, March 22nd. Um, applications are right around the corner. Good morning, good morning. VCU Prime in the house. What's going on, my friends? Um, application season's right around the corner. That means uh, if you're applying to medical school to start in 2025, I can't believe it's 2025 already, um, you are applying now, basically. Uh, you should be kind of in the thick of your applications, your primary applications, your personal statements, your sec uh, not secondaries, your activity descriptions, building your school list, asking for letters of recommendations, all of that good stuff. And oh, by the way, there's this little thing called the MCAT. If you haven't taken that yet, you're trying to cram that in at the same time. Oh, by the way, if you're still in school, you are taking all of those classes and trying to maintain your GPA. And oh, by the way, there are these things called your extracurricular activities, your clinical experiences, your shadowing, your uh, your research, all of this stuff that you should be ideally maintaining as well as you go through this process. So there is a lot going on, and I want to spend the next uh, 50 minutes or so with you today uh, chatting about um, I don't know. I have a smiley face next to my <laughs> my my, uh, my time on my phone. I've never seen that before. Anyway, random random uh, digression or whatever uh, tangent. Um, I want to spend the next uh, fifty minutes or so talking about the application, answering your questions about the application. Happy to uh, answer kind of any question, but uh, ideally focusing on applications because that's the season we are in. Pierce on YouTube says. It's a lot. I'm in the thick of it now. That is, uh, that's a lot. Um, Dream with Beth on Instagram. When can we start the actual application, filling it out? So the applications historically every single year open up the beginning of May. Um, so that's typically when the application cycle opens and you can start working on your application. Now, that doesn't mean you can't start working on your application. Let me rephrase that. The applications open in May for that next cycle. And that is when you can start copying the stuff that you've already been working on into the actual application. So uh, the beginning of May is when that is. Um, a question on, or not really a question, a comment on YouTube. I have no idea how to start my personal statement. Well, friends, you are in luck. Uh, the pre-med playbook guide to the medical school personal statement. Um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you get books, go check that out. Um, I have lots of podcast episodes all about it as well. Go check it out. At the end of the day, the question that you are answering for the personal statement, in my opinion, is why do you want to be a doctor? That's that's the ultimate question that you are trying to answer. And so if you do a good job writing your personal statements, then you are answering that question. Not why do you think you're going to be a good doctor? Not why do you think you're prepared to be a doctor? Not why do you think you know you want to be a doctor? Why do you want to be a doctor? What experiences do you have to help support that? That is the ultimate question. Uh, question here from Deer 1598. Does working as a dental assistant count as clinical experience? It counts. Uh, I would not have that be your main clinical experience. I would not have that be your only clinical experience because that supports a potential decision that you want to be a dentist, not a physician. Pre-med world for the activity section. Can we include experiences starting from 2016 or it has to be most recent in the last three years or so? Uh, yeah, nothing. There's no rules around that other than the general rule of thumb for all three application services is that it is after high school. The uh, AMCAS application doesn't really give any guidance. TMDSAS is pretty specific that it can't include high school. Um, a comus has a little bit of language um, that says, ideally, college level and within the last 10 years. That is what they all say. Becoming Dr. Torres. What's up? I read your book twice. Incredible help. Make it clear if something fits into the personal statement. Thank you for that comment. Awesome. Uh, Dylan, is it safe to use a mix of both paragraph and bullet points in the activities section? Uh, I'm not a fan of bullet points outside of like the awards uh, section, outside of potentially the shadowing uh, category. But I'm not a fan of bullet points 
in um, in the activity section outside of those kind of random examples. Between CNA to Children's Hospital and Scribe at UCLA and research, which experience would be great or better than other when I'm talking about it? Uh, yeah. Uh, so we get this question a lot, or I get this question a lot about um, – <clears throat> Which which experience should I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? And ultimately, the question is, which one will be better on my application? And I can't answer that. Nobody can answer that. And even medical schools hate that question because they're not looking for something specific. They're looking for students who have gone down this journey. They're looking for students who understand why they want to be a physician. They're looking for students who are out there making an impact on the world, not just looking for students who have checked all the boxes that they think are out there. So yeah, do do the one that you want to do. Is research experience a soft requirement for top schools? Yeah, research is not a requirement. Now, do schools out there potentially as part of their rubric have some sort of scoring scale where if you don't have any research, you don't get any points. And if you do have research, you do get some points. And will that potentially hurt your application? Maybe. Does that prevent you from getting into those schools? Probably not. Um, Research is, uh, in in my words, the most overrated part of the application, according to pre-meds. What do I do if I can't get a science letter of rec? I've already graduated. Uh, yeah, you have to figure that out. Uh, some medical schools out there are willing to um, kind of adjust their requirements for non-traditional students. Uh, I, the example I always give is Sam Houston State. They have language on their website that says if you've uh, been out of school for a year, then just whatever letters you can get. They're the most lenient that I know of. Uh, other schools, if you haven't been out of school for more than three or four or five years, they're going to want science letters. And so you have to look at each of the schools that you're potentially applying to and go, what letters do they want? Uh, what letters can I get? Where am I missing? And if I'm missing and I reach out to the school and say, hey, I, I can't get this letter for X, Y, or Z reasons, and they say, tough luck, we that's a requirement, then you either not apply to that school or you, um, what what some people do is they just take a class to, to potentially get that letter of recommendation. <clears throat> Locked and lemoned. <laughs> All right. Locked and lemoned. Uh, your books and videos helped me get into med school last cycle. Now, first year at a school I love and doing well. Thanks for all you do. Awesome. Congratulations. Fantastic. Love it. Uh, Pierce on YouTube. I'm writing one of my most meaningfuls and I'm confused on the word limit. So it's not a word limit. It's character limit. I've seen many people use 1325 words. Characters. Uh, but the AMCAS website says 1,325 characters. Yes, it's characters. I feel like 1,325 characters is not a lot for a most meaningful. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I it, Wherever you saw words, you're, you misread or whoever is putting out the fact that it's 1,325 words doesn't know the difference between words and characters. It's 1,325 characters. It's always been 1,325 characters or at least for a long time. Um, uh, yeah, uh, again, uh, in my application book, so I have, I have lots of books, <laughs> written lots of books, uh, pre-med playbook guide to the medical school application process. There are examples in here of, uh, activity descriptions with most meaningful descriptions and all that kind of good stuff. So do your best. Remember, remember Pierce, um, with the most meaningful, you get the 700 character description and then you get the separate, not an additional, it's a separate 1,325 characters to answer the question, why is this most meaningful to you? Any tips on the preview? Uh, yeah, um, go take their practice test and do the best you can. It's a kind of a trash test. I'm not a big fan of it. How do you know when your personal statement is ready? I feel like mine is never good enough. So Ari Love, um, I, I heard a great quote uh, one day a couple of years ago that said, great art is never finished. It just, it just stops in interesting places. 
And so that's how I feel like the personal statement is all of your activity descriptions, your secondary essays will feel like this as well, where you're just going to have to be okay with it in very interesting places where it stops. And outside of that, um, you will always nitpick it. You'll always nitpick. Hey, Dr. Ray, what does medical school mean by personal letter? I'm assuming you mean personal statement. That's what I'm assuming. Volunteer at one place for a long time rather than doing multiple multiple places. Can't really answer that. Where can we read the book? Uh, bookstores, libraries, Amazon, all of those good places. But all your books and I'm current second year med student, thank you for your working guidance. Hey, what's going on? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Love it. Should you write multiple personal statements? I'm not sure what you mean by multiple personal statements. Should you go through multiple drafts? Of course, right? This is a, a process that you go through. Um, so yeah, multiple, multiple drafts. I mean, like when they say one of your LORs can be a personal letter. I've never seen that. I would love to know what school says that. Um, uh, yeah, I've never seen that. Let me know. Nat. Um, my guess, and this is just a random guess because I've been doing this a long time. My guess is that this is not a U.S. school saying that. It's maybe a Caribbean school, an international school. Nat, I would love to know. Happy to be wrong. Um, does doing a retrospective chart review for clinic count as clinical research? Um, yes. Sounds like it. I would say so. <clears throat> what characteristics make a good letter of recommendation? So ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, a good letter of recommendation is written by someone who knows who you are, can speak to who you are, speak to your traits, speak to your qualities, and not just a letter that says, hey, Sally got an A in my class. Hey, I'm the dean of this um, uh, department, and so you should respect me, and I really don't know this person, but... I, I'm a big wig, and so you should respect my opinion. Like, those don't matter. Um, it's really a letter that can speak to who you are and, and the impact that you have on those around you. Those are fantastic letters. Uh, Elon, piggybacking off a question about high school, if I continue something after high school, should I only put the hours I do after high school? That's kind of a gray area, Elon. I don't think there's a right or a wrong there. Um, so yeah, do do what you want. Sometimes we say go ahead, add those hours. Sometimes we say don't. It, it's kind of a <laughs> there's there's no strict rule there. Uh, Jack, I had a rough start first second year of undergrad. I had a two point eight to a three point one. Last two years, I was in the three six three eight ish range, but in three point six semester, uh, I got a C plus in OCHEM two ended with three five three. Do you recommend an SMP? I don't know if I'd recommend an SMP, but potentially a few more classes, maybe another semester or two of undergrad level classes to get you going. Good luck. Good luck, Jack. Jonathan, how do you go about picking clinical volunteering that would be the most meaningful? I feel like a lot of the time they make you do non-clinical work. Uh, even physicians do non-clinical work. And this is a, a big um uh, a big focus that I have is really helping students understand, right? The and, and why we recommend shadowing and clinical experience is you are not going to spend 100% of your time doing quote unquote clinical experience. Um, a large percentage of clinical time in a clinical job is spent doing non clinical things. The goal is you just don't focus on that when you're writing about it. Like it, if, if you have an amazing, um, whether it's volunteer or paid position where you're interacting with patients and you're taking care of them and you're caring for them, whatever, you are also at that same time uh, cleaning, stocking, whatever. Just don't focus on that stuff when you're writing about it. So easy peasy. Um, does the C plus completely screw the upward trend? It doesn't completely screw it. It just puts a little dent into it. Never give up 100. I'm currently a nursing student and a pre-med student. Should I put my 140 hour senior year nursing preceptorship clinical rotation as an activity description? I wouldn't, uh, because it's, it's class, right? It's coursework. Good luck. Um, I never understand, um, why 
pre-meds, especially pre-meds who know they want to go to medical school, do nursing as a pre-med um, kind of major or path. I, it's just they're two different paths. So anyway, uh, Reese on Instagram, do schools look at the amount of BCPM hours, biology, chemistry, physics, and math? For those of you who don't know, those are the science courses for AMCAS and TMDSAS. COMIS for DO schools do not consider math a science for some reason. Um, will an applicant with more BCPM hours be more favorable compared to one with less, even if both have met the prereq requirements? Uh, Reese, we can't. So, so let me ask you a question. What does it matter? Can you control how many science credits someone else has taken? The only thing that you can control is take science credits, right? The prereqs that you need. And so ultimately, this question for me is one that is is uh, a futility because you can't control other people. You can't control what med schools are going to be doing. Do they have in their rubric? Um, if you have this specific GPA with this specific number of science hours, then you get these points. But if you have less science hours, then you only get these points. Like it's the, the, the question is too nuanced and too focused on what are the med schools going to do that ultimately for me, it's a useless question because the only thing that you can control in this process is how well you do in the science classes that you take. If you have a 4.0 in the 30 or 40 or whatever it is, science credits that are required for either your major or for med school, are you going to go, well, Sally has 60 credits, so I think I'm going to take 61 credits, right? This isn't the price is right where the, the person who's closest without going over wins. Like, that's just not the way that this works. So, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, can you apply to med school if you haven't taken the MCAT by May, June? You can. You can submit your application without an MCAT score. Um, <clears throat> a lot of students will submit their application to one school and one school only. And then when they get their MCAT score back, then uh, we'll add more schools. The difference, though, the, the thing to think about is that the majority, if not all medical schools, will not look at your application until that MCAT score is in. So beware. If applying 2025, 2026 cycle, when should I join Application Academy? Application Academy for next cycle will start in January. Good question. Do Texas DO schools have earlier secondary app requests because their verification time is much shorter than AMCAS? When should I expect to receive those if I submit within the first week? Um, so again, broad stroke questions about specific medical schools. We can never, I, I can never tell you yes, no, like for certain. Um, have we seen DO schools applying through a COMIS <clears throat> um, have shorter verification times? Absolutely. The ACOMIS verification process is days rather than weeks. Um, the question is how many Texas schools are not part of TMDSAS? Um, or or maybe that's your question is even, even through TMDSAS. So TMDSAS has a different verification process. They're verifying typically residency status and not grades first because they actually don't want your transcript right away for TMDSAS. And so verification is, is usually a little bit faster as well compared to AMCAS. Um, but with DO schools, DO schools made a big push last year to get secondaries out as fast as possible. Um, it, it kind of reeked of desperation, unfortunately. Um, and so, yeah, I be prepared. Be prepared for secondaries as soon as possible with DO schools. If your average is around 3.4, 3.5, and you have a few semesters of a 3.7, 3.8, finishing out the last semester with 3.7, is, is that in need of doing more classes post-grad? Potentially not, Chandler. Potentially not. Sounds like you got a great upward trend. Thank you for that nuance, right? <laughs> it's what I always ask for. It's like if, if Chandler would have just said, hey, I have a 3.4, 3.5, do I need to do more coursework? My answer would be, I don't know. I need more details. Uh, and Chandler provided. So potentially not right again something that's missing here is well how many credits are there what 
percentage of those credits were science credits. Uh, so many, so many other um, questions in there as well. Jared on the YouTube, how risky is attending a brand new med school? Uh, it's not risky at all. Um, there has been no med school in recent history or in a long time that has opened and then has failed to get their full accreditation. Um, so no, no issues at all. Ba -ba. All right. I have a low GPA that is due to several divorces during my undergrad seven. Dude, we gotta we gotta work on uh, picking partners and then picking classes better. Um, all right, I, I'm sorry you had uh, two divorces during my undergraduate. Also struggling with an undiagnosed disease. What should I do to improve my grades? You just take more classes, more classes, uh, potentially a formal postback, potentially an SMP, potentially depending on what those grades are. You may just want to do uh, a, a whole nother. A degree potentially another science degree there's lots of ways to mitigate that but ultimately at the end of the day it's more classes at close to a 4.0 as possible mimi schmidt how are completed versus projected hours viewed or volunteer experiences struggling to see how many activities experiences during a gap year help my application unless i end up reapplying or taking two gap years yeah so mimi this is one of those questions where it's an impossible question to answer because you're asking me, what do the med schools do? And there are 200 medical schools in this country, over 200 medical schools in this country, over over 200 um, admissions committees, how they view completed versus anticipated or projected hours is, is completely different, right? Uh, ACOMIS doesn't even want you to project hours. AMCAS makes it easy to um, project hours with the an ant anticipated hours and completed hours sections. Uh, TMDSAS has a futures hours category um, or heading. So it really just depends. <clears throat> Got two LORs last year, one now for this cycle. Do last year's need redated? Ideally, ideally letters are dated that you, uh, the year that you apply. Andrew, reapplicant here. Can you realistically get screened out with a low CAR score but a high MCAT uh, for TMDSAS schools? Again, specific schools. I, I can't tell you specific schools, TMDSAS versus AMCAS versus Comus. Um, this is always a fear. If you got a 515 with a quote low CAR score, I guarantee you your CAR score is not that low. Because if you got a 515, right? Let's do the math. So 515 uh, minus. Um, uh, let's say 132 minus 132 minus 132. A, a low car score is a 119, assuming you you potentially got perfect scores and all the other ones, right? Uh, Andrew saying a 124. That leaves a 391 with an average in the other sections of a 130, right? So, uh, Andrew, you are fine. This is a big fear that students have at that 120, uh, 124 number. Um, Andrew, I was talking to a student the other day, 518 um, with a 124. And it, he was so freaked out about his 124. I'm like, I promise you, they'll see the 518. In your case, they'll see the 515 and go, you're fine. There's, there's no issue there. Um, have no fear with that car score. Um, Audrey, I'm loving your personal statement book. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm a non-trad. Do undergraduate prereq uh, credits expire? Sometimes. <laughs> this is this is a frustrating thing. Uh, sometimes. Go to the MSAR. Um, at, for MD schools, unfortunately, DO schools don't have this kind of nuanced information. Um, the individual medical school websites might for DO schools, but the MSAR has uh, some new information on there that'll say when uh, and if prereqs expire. So you just gotta go check that out. Unfortunately. Never give up. How do med school admissions view nursing prereqs, uh, pre-meds? Uh, again, um, all of you were asking this morning, like the these very specific questions that are just impossible to answer. One school may like nursing pre-meds. One school may not like nursing pre-meds. Ultimately, the question is, why would someone not like a nursing pre-med? So a, for, for a admissions committee 
to go, oh, a nursing pre-med, like that's terrible. They, they don't care about the major. They care about who you are. They care about what you've been doing. They care about the impact that you make on this world. They care about your grades. They care about your MCAT score. They care about your writing style, your communication style. They're not going to go, oh, nursing major versus his, uh, history major, theater major. Oh, biochemistry major. That's the one we really like. So uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, take your prereqs, good, good, get good grades, take your MCAT, get a good score. Uh, get your clinical experience, understand why you want to be a doctor, get your shadowing, understand the life of a doctor, uh, get some research if you want to get some research, all that good stuff. You'll be good to go. Good to go. All right, let's keep rocking. Let's see. Does it look bad, Kieran, on Instagram? Does it look bad to include a future gap year job medical assistant on my application that I will not be starting for a couple of months? I want to include it because it'll be a good clinical experience, but I'm not sure how it would look if I have no hours in the position currently. So there are a couple ways to think about this. Number one, Karen, do you have clinical experience now? If you have clinical experience now, and this is just another job, a different clinical experience that you will be replacing your current clinical experience with or adding on to your current clinical experience, there's less issue. Now, what are you going to be able to say about it in the activity description? Not much, right? You're not going to be able to show who you are. You're not going to be able to show the impact that you have because it's all, this is what I will be doing. Um, if, if you don't have clinical, so so in the first scenario, you have clinical experience. This is just more and or slash different. Um, there's there's probably not a huge issue with you including it, even though it's probably a wasted space because you're not going to be able to say anything about it. Uh, a lot of medical schools will ask in their secondary applications if you um, are taking a gap year, or you're doing something else or whatever, like what are you doing during the application cycle? And that's an opportunity to talk about this uh, this new job. If you don't have clinical experience or if you don't have enough clinical experience, which is uh, kind of vague, and you are putting this on your application because you're hoping that it'll be like, look, I I'm going to have the hours. I'm going to have the hours. That's not the goal of this process. The goal of this process is to get the hours, reflect on the experience, and be able to communicate in your essays and in your interviews why you want to be a doctor. It's not about showing the medical schools, look, I have hours. So if you don't have the hours now, if you don't have enough hours to be able to reflect on those hours, to be able to communicate clearly in your personal statement, in interviews, why you want to be a doctor, and you're hoping that putting this activity that you're not going to start for a while on your application to just check a box and go, look, I'm going to get the hours. I would recommend you don't apply in that situation. Not even don't put it on there. Don't apply. So um, there, there are lots of potential opportunities on there. Rebecca, does a B minus on prereqs worth retaking? No, it's not. Uh, can I use studying abroad as a meaningful experience? Uh, I, this is one that comes up every once in a while. Uh, studying abroad is typically classwork. In the activity section, we typically consider extracurricular, meaning outside of classrooms. Um, so no, but we see it a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I probably wouldn't and wouldn't recommend it. Um, potentially, if it's something abroad that you loved, potentially maybe uh, putting travel uh, on your application uh, as the activity. Um, potentially, maybe. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's keep rocking here. I got about uh, 20 more minutes before I have to run. Any advice for us non-trad students over 40? Yeah, go check out the old pre-meds podcast. Um, I I love the non-trads. Uh, we I, I interview a ton of them. We work with a lot of them through uh, Medical School HQ Advising. So yeah, go check it out. Can meeting with families, patients online be considered clinical experience? Um, depends, Rebecca. Depends on what you're doing. I don't know. 
All right, let me see if I missed any other questions here. From Jack, while studying for the MCAT, I learned I have ADHD. Would I be allowed to make my meds at MCAT testing center? Take my meds. Uh, I didn't apply for accommodations. Yeah, so once you um, are at your testing center, uh, once you go into the room, you're not going to be able to take your meds. But during your breaks, during your lunch, um, before, uh, you can do what you want. Crystal, if I go from a 3.7 average to a 4.0 average my last year, does that maybe count as an upward trend? Uh, sure. I mean, a 3.7 is a fantastic GPA to begin with. Um, so yeah, do it. Sassy Brassy. How do I know when I'm ready to apply? I'm taking the MCAT in April, starting a gap year. I have a ton of experiences, but no personal statement, no pre-writing, no shadowing. Uh, if you don't have shadowing, I would say you're not ready. Um, uh, a ton of experiences. What are those experiences? That would be my question to make sure they're effective clinical experiences that give you the experiences you need. Um, could you potentially squeeze in shadowing right now? Uh, yeah, potentially. But uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're not writing your personal statement, no pre-writing anything, like, why? Why is that? So be careful there. All right. Let's bring on Tara. And if you're on YouTube, you want to come join me live on Instagram, you can do so. <clears throat> My friends on YouTube should be able to hear um once Tara comes on, assuming she will come on. Anne asks, should I write a different uh, different personal statement for MD and DO schools? I don't think you need to. Uh, the question for both is why do you want to be a doctor? Uh, for osteopathic schools, I don't think for the for the personal statement, uh, it's my opinion that you don't need to write a separate YDO personal statement. And what most students do uh, when they do write a, quote, different personal statement is they just, <clears throat> wherever they talk about being a physician, they just put osteopathic physician. And it's super generic and uh, super forced. Do two Cs in a science course uh, alarming to med schools? Uh, it's not alarming if you can show that you have great grades in other places and are not an academic risk. Two data points does not make or break you. Um, upward trend MCAT from 480 to 505. 505 is a good score. Uh, it's not fantastic. It's not terrible. Going from a 480 just shows me that, <laughs> that you took the test without knowing what the MCAT was. You're like, oh yeah, I'll take this thing called the MCAT and I'll go sit down and take it. How hard can it be? Uh, and it's usually students who have typically decent GPAs that are like, oh, I'm a good student. I can take the MCAT. Um, so yeah, uh, go for it. That's awesome. Struggling to get a second science letter having graduated multiple years ago. Yeah. Uh, so, Fatih, we answered this one a little bit earlier. Similar question. At the end of the day, the med schools have their requirements for what they want. Um, some medical schools will waive those requirements for non-traditional students. Some won't. Uh, some may have a case-by-case. -case, so you just have to reach out to schools, unfortunately. What's up, Fitness Bunny? Um, hope you're doing well. Uh, is medication therapy management phone calls with geriatric patients as a pharmacy tech considered clinical experience? Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. That's super nuanced, uh, but potentially. It depends on what those conversations sound like. Uh, but yeah, potentially. Make make the argument for it. Put it put it as yes, and make the argument for it. Uh, okay. It's a joke. Uh, that's, that's the username on Instagram. I don't have a lot of shadowing experience, but I have been working full-time in an ED with a lot of patient interaction, uh, clinical and work a lot besides the docs. Can that help buffer the shadowing? So def define what not a lot of shadowing experience is. And I would also recommend you have the exposure to these physicians say, Hey doc, can I stay for an hour or two after my shift and just hang out with you a little bit more, a little bit more focused on just watching you and listening to you. You, you have that exposure already. 
go go do it. I provide Reiki based on inpatient referrals. Is this clinical? What about hospice programs, visiting patients at home? Hospice definitely is clinical. Reiki, um, you may get some pushback on that, just being uh, some Eastern uh, Eastern medicine. Go for it. The If it's in a hospital, in a, in a clinical setting where you're doing this, uh, obviously the hospital that you're in is a little bit more on the... Uh, um, the Eastern medicine side uh, of acceptance. So go for it. <clears throat> so here's where uh, le legit taco. Um, here's where I, I have issues with, <laughs> with students giving advice. Uh, for those asking about LORs, if you've been out of school, you should be good with one science and hopefully you've done some research in a gap year. So what does research during a gap year have to do with anything? The question's about letters of rec. So throw that uh, advice out the window. And you should be good with one science letter. Says who? Says who? <laughs> Every medical school has different requirements. And there are some medical schools out there. Uh, and this is talking to hundreds and thousands of students. There are some medical schools out there that go, oh, you've only been out of school two years. No, you still have to meet all of the requirements, the two science, one nine science, whatever it is. So be careful giving advice um, when you when you don't have the full picture. Um, yeah. What is a good goal for a number of clinical hours community service? More than zero. More than zero. Medics life. Let's see where your question. I don't see your. Uh, no, I don't see your question. Maybe I missed it. Uh, I just see a comment about not wanting to do the business side of medicine. Maybe shadowing. Um, does clinical experience abroad count? Uh, it can. Um, it can. Must I shadow a DO for DO schools? No, um, you do not. Uh, University of Arkansas College of Osteopathic Medicine has historically had a requirement for a DO letter, um, which theoretically you would say, hey, yeah, I should shadow a DO for a DO letter. Obviously, you don't have to shadow a DO to get a DO letter. You could potentially be their scribe. You can uh, be a volunteer in the ED where they work, whatever that may be. Um, but uh, I looked recently, and I think maybe they changed that requirement. They were the only school that required a DO letter, and maybe they got tired of being called out. Um, so anyway, Noel, non-trad 2024, applicant, undergrad 2016, master's 2020, shadowing and research during undergrad working in ICU is uh, is it okay that it's spread out? Uh, Noel, without looking at everything, it's, it's really hard to say, right? If your clinical experience is only from five years ago, then yes, that's bad. So define spread out. It, it's really hard to know. And this is where like our, our, our software platform maps, which for free, you can go and, and put all of your activities in, put all your courses in, and we can see that. We can visually see what that quote unquote spread outness, if that's a word, uh, looks like. Uh, how do I know if I'm ready for med school? Nobody's ready for med school. Um, Wesley, how should I write a personal statement that is compelling enough? Define compelling. So this is where a lot of students get get tripped up is they um, get focused on, oh, my personal statement has to be compelling. It has to be unique. It has to stand out. It has to be, whoosh, right? And ultimately, the personal statement has to do the job. It has to show medical schools why you want to be a physician. And for most students applying to medical school, it is going to be a very common process. You were hurt. You were ill. Your family was hurt. Your family was ill. Obviously, death. Um, friends uh, were hurt or ill. Potentially, parent exposure. Those are the most common um, things that show students, show kids typically, uh, sometimes later in life as well. Again, we work with lots of non-trads to, to, to show students, oh, like there's this whole world out there of people that help other people in this setting wearing a white coat and a fancy stethoscope and whatever, right? 
Um, so the personal statement just has to show that journey of exploration where a lot of students go wrong is they focus on, Ooh, look at me. I, I know that being a doctor involves communication skills. So let me tell you how I have good communication skills. Oh, I know that being a doctor involves lots of teamwork. So let me show you how I have teamwork for me. That does not make a good personal statement. <clears throat> Uh, and can you explain the difference between the MD and DO application timeline, please? Historically, there hasn't been a ton of difference. Uh, last year, 2023-2024 cycle, uh, ACOMIS and DO schools turned it all on its head. So applications open up beginning of May across all three application services. AMCAS, you cannot submit until the end of May. Medical schools do not have access, do not have access to the the applications until typically the end of June. That's when secondary start rolling out. A comus now, you can submit immediately and you can start getting secondaries almost immediately. So the the a comus timeline, the DO timeline is much more accelerated. And uh, a reason why I say don't submit your DO application early. Just get get it done go i can submit if i wanted to when you're ready to submit don't submit go start working on secondary essays because those medical schools are going to start sending secondaries relatively quickly um so yeah do you have any advice on cutting down my personal statement <laughs> it depends on how big it is so uh do and uh amcas and acomis you get 5300 characters same i would use the same essay for both uh, TMDSAS, you get 5,000 characters, 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 not words, friends. Um, uh, if you're at 5,600 characters for AMCAS, you just go through and go, is this line helping? Is this line helping? Is this line helping? Is this line helping? And just start cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. That's all. Just got to go line by line. It's taking six years to graduate from my undergrad because I added two minors to my honors degree, looked it down out potentially. Potentially, I talked to a dean of, of admissions at one medical school last summer, and he made it clear that uh, his admissions committee uh, does not like it when students space things out. But oh well, <laughs> right? Uh, big picture won't be an issue. So that's why I always say potentially. It depends. <sighs> How important is defining a theme in a personal statement? I do not recommend a theme in a personal statement. You know what the theme is? You. You are the you are the theme. Uh, who you are, the impact that you have on this world, that is the theme. Wesley, how do you find your purpose slash story to pursue medicine? I have mine, but many say that it's a very common reason. Common is not a problem. Common is not a problem. It has to be authentic to you. And this is where students go wrong is they think, oh, that's common. Common is not cliche. Cliche is I like science and I want to help people. There's no authenticity there. That's just cliche. Common is I grew up, my, my grandma had a stroke. I was in the hospital with her by her side for two weeks before she passed. I saw the impact the doctors had. I saw the impact the doctors had on our families. I saw that the care that they took, it really made a big impact on me. That's authentic. That is common. Even uh, I had um, uh, Sanjay Gupta, right? Dr. Sanjay Gupta from CNN um, uh, on the podcast, the Pre-Med Years podcast. If you guys don't know, I have a podcast, premedyears.com. It's been out for 566 episodes, I think now, almost... Uh, almost 10 years. November will be 10 years. No, November will be 12 years. Yeah, 12 years. Crazy. Um, uh, but it, Sanjay Gupta, I asked him, like, how did you get down this path? His grandma had a stroke and he re he realized that there were these people out there called doctors to take care of, of uh, patients and families. And he's like, ah, that's what I want to do. All right, my story is a little bit different. I I had, uh, my, my dad was a type one diabetic, kidney failure, dialysis, kidney transplant, failed, rejected, ultimately passed when I was, when I was young. Um, but 
that exposure wasn't why I wanted to be a doctor. I was injured playing baseball, hurt my shoulder, went through physical therapy, <clears throat> went through uh, athletic trainers, realized, oh, there are people out there that help athletes return to the sport they love. I want to be a physical therapist. And then I realized, oh, uh, in my senior year of high school dissecting a cat, I'm like, oh, I want to cut people for a living. That's what I want to do. Um, and I kind of married the two and said, oh, I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. That was the only reason I went to med school is I, I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Um, and I had seen an orthopedic surgeon for my shoulder injury. And so common is fine as long as it's your story. So I picked up my book, The Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Personal Statement. Read this. This book is the book that helps you tell your story. This book. <sighs> Kung Fu Panda, overall 3.2, switching majors from comp sci business then to biology major, did it for me. Yearly GPA is 2.0. Ouch. 348, 369, 4.0. Do you think I need a post back MCAT in June? Uh, impossible to know. Uh, impossible to know. What does your science GPA look like, right? Comp Sci, unfortunately, probably has um, some science-based courses in there, potentially some math-based courses. Business, obviously, is not going to be a lot of science. What do your science GPA trends look like? Um, is your science GPA, I'm assuming potentially your science GPA average is going to be closer to maybe a 3.6, 3.7, your overall GPA a little bit lower. Um, Maybe, maybe another semester or two. I, I don't know without seeing all of the details. And again, that's where a free account at mapped.com uh, will come in handy so you can just graph all of that out. All right. Oh, uh, I want to answer this one. This is a very common question. Lilia. 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 Um, I have a foreign bachelor's degree from France. Do I have a chance to get accepted in med school with a U.S. master's degree with all other prereqs? Um, it depends. Uh, it depends on the school. There are some schools that have like a 30-hour rule where they want at least 30 credits from a U.S. institution. There are um, the, the DO application is typically more friendly to international degrees where you have to go through the West um, uh, transcript evaluation service. Uh, where they'll kind of convert your French degree into American GPA. Um, some schools, a lot of schools have what we call the 90 degree rule where they are 90, 90 credit rule where they want 90 credits from a U.S. institution. So it's going to depend on the individual institutions, unfortunately. Um, all right. Kung Fu Panda 3.2 science GPA. Yeah, potentially, potentially again, um, uh, you, you may need some more work there. And again, it's hard. It's hard without seeing all the individual data points stronger than darkness. How do I include a trade school into my application? Should I place the GPA in hours of the school in an activity description? Should I send schools the transcript? Um, a trade school, if it's an accredited school where you got grades, you're putting that on your application, that those are going in as courses. So that's that's how you include it. Remember, your application requires you to put in every single class from every single school, from everything post-secondary um, into your uh, application. All right, friends, I'm going to end there. I got to run to Application Academy. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for hanging out with me for the hour. Uh, I'm typically here uh, most Fridays um, at 11 a.m. Eastern. I will not be here next Friday. It is spring break with my kids. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon. Bye.